These right here are the tiniest spiders in the dark den. And today, at the end of this video, you're going to figure out if feeding them is as exciting as feeding their adult counterparts. Before we start the feeding video, let's give Bella a visit. As you know, in last video, we rehoused her into this enormous enclosure and she's now most likely the tarantula with the biggest enclosure that is just for her. She is way down in this corkback tube, under that corkback tube and also she was really busy in the past few days and look at this. She actually dug out a second entrance of her hide. You see uh, over there is her main entrance and she dug all the way to this, all the way to the end of the corkback and now she got an escape route right there on the other side. Also the funny thing is, look at this wood piece that I left in here. The mushrooms are starting to grow over there. <laughs> crazy, crazy. I am not really sure if I should move it out or not. Anyhow, the reason why I'm recording this, why I'm recording her enclosure, I want to answer some questions that I spotted in the comments of the last video. First thing, I showed which are the isopods that I have in this enclosure. And let me see if I can find, here is one small, small isopod, you see? I have this species, I'm not really sure. I have it written down what is the name of this species, but anyhow, these are the one, the type of isopods that I have in this enclosure. And a lot of you wrote, that I should be careful because they really like to eat proteins and therefore they could be a potential threat to Bella as she is molting but the thing is I'm always dropping dead roaches inside of this enclosure so they already have plenty of proteins in their diet and shouldn't be a threat, a real threat to Bella but as always I will keep an eye on that. Second thing that I spotted being written a lot in the video is why I titled the video this was not smart. The reason for that is you don't really want to keep a tarantula, a terrestrial tarantula in a tall enclosure and this is really a tall tall enclosure so that is why the, it is not really the smartest thing to house a tarantula inside of enclosure of this type because when you put a tarantula inside of the enclosure uh, she needs to settle down for a while and she will roam around trying to find a perfect place to hide and during that time they can potentially climb and fall to their death because a tarantula like Bella got a really really fragile abdomen that can easily burst so that's why this wasn't really the smartest enclosure for her but as I said in that video I was closely monitoring her what she will do when I put her in the enclosure and thankfully she immediately went for the hide and started digging then I knew that it is like 99% safe and that there is no way that she will climb up and fall but there is always that one percent chance one percent risk that she will regardless of her height she will just decide to go and climb but that is the risk that i'm willing to take that is why i titled the video this was not smart maybe i should have explained that better in the video now we can feed these little buggers the first one we will feature are these two jumping spiders a uh, scientific name will be written right here because I don't really remember it. There is actually an update in regards to these two, you see. Right here is the jumping spider, super, super tiny. And if you look down here, this webbing, this is the area where he sleeps. And inside of it, you can see that there is a tiny, tiny molt, which means that he molted and he's now actually a bit bigger than last time you seen him. So I'm not really sure if he is too fresh to be fed right now. You see the other one didn't really molt and is actually hiding inside of its webbed hide. Oh, it's doing something funny with its abdomen. Uh, but it didn't molt and also right here on top you can see the fruit fly which means that he didn't eat most likely because He's in a pre-molt and will molt any time now. So I'm going to take this fruit fly out and offer it to the other one. Hopefully we will have a takedown. Last time I tried to record the feeding with these tiny jumping spiders. It didn't really went well. The footage really wasn't that good. But this time maybe we will get lucky. Okay, you chill now because I first need to prepare this enclosure. The angle is now really, really good. Zoom in just a little bit and I can drop the fly in. 
Oh, 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 that was super quick reaction. Couldn't really see if the, the shot was good or not. Gonna need to check the footage while editing this video. But I think that it was all right. Tiny jumping spider. I need much bigger enclosure in order to record a good feeding clip. Because recordings inside of these small cups can't go any better, really. Now, next spiders that, that I'm going to feature in this video are these five cups. I'm going to take just one or two of them because they are all the same species. Some of them look a bit different. Oh, you can actually see it really, really well. Same thing as with the jumping spider. I don't really remember the scientific name, so I'm just going to write it down. And you can see this one is really, really fat. So what is interesting with these spiders? I have them for now like three or maybe even four years and I never put a single drop of water inside of their enclosures. I only fed them every couple of weeks and that's it. Not because I'm a bad keeper, but because that is how you keep these little ones. And they should actually grow a bit bigger, but how big exactly, I am not really sure. Okay, I got it outside. This one looks exactly as when they were tiny spiders, while the other, I believe two are a bit different. So I'm also going to show the other one, but the feeding attempt will come first. Hopefully I can just hold the, the cup and feed the spider like that. And I will be using the lateralis roaches for that. A small baby lateralis roaches, you see? So the question is, can we get an exciting feeding clip? Just going to let go the roach. And if he starts to wiggle, wiggle, that should attract the spider. Hopefully, of course. The spider is interested or not. Although, since it is super fat, maybe it is not hungry, who knows. The roach is definitely creating some commotion, so I'm not really confident that this will end well yeah the spider is just sitting there i'm gonna try to add more wiggle appears that he's now going for the tweezers and not for the roach wiggle 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 nope this won't work now let's try with the other one you see this one you can barely see it but this one is much darker than the previous one, so I'm not sure if this is a mature spider or not. You see, significantly darker. Let's see if we can get a different result. Ooh. Yeah. Come on, grab the roach. The roach is maybe squished too much, you see. Not a lot of life left. I'm gonna give him the other... Oh, now he's going for the roach. What the hell, man? You need to do that on the video. Come on, let's go. Provide us with the good takedown. Oh. Are you feeling out the situation or what the hell? Look how his front legs are like pulsing or something. Oh, <laughs> interesting. And I guess he just gave up. Seriously, I cannot believe this. Hoping for a third time the charm. At least you could see the differences between them really, really good. This one is now attacking the tweezers or the roach. I have no idea. And my camera is the battery in the camera is dying. I need to change it quickly. Of course, nothing happened in the meantime. Okay, I think that we need to face the fact that this is not happening. This spider is literally sitting for 15 minutes above this roach and I was waiting and waiting and waiting, but okay, we are moving on. At least you had, you could see them very well, but the feelings definitely weren't exciting because we didn't have feelings. This is something that enables a kind of big spider for this cup to still live comfortably inside because you see, this spider is actually using the, the cup vertically. Let me open it. 
and remove this oh remove this webbing see down there there's your spider and it would definitely be too big for this enclosure but thankfully vertically it fits just fine uh, i'm not sure if i can feed it maybe like i don't know if i figure something out if we are lucky maybe it will just jump out mm -hmm. come on grab the roach this one also doesn't what is happening today i wanted to prove with this video that uh, feeding tiny spiders can be exciting but they are definitely definitely making it difficult this is the same species so i will try with it hoping for a better outcome mm -hmm. come out of oh i think that i messed this one because i want the spider to come out so we can see it ah so i'll just release the Today is definitely not my day. Next tarantula, the third one of the same species. Ooh, that is one huge abdomen, you see? Maybe that is actually the reason why the other two didn't eat. And this webbing might mean that they are in the pre-mold. Ah, uh, yeah, that could be the case. So I'm just going to jump to the, the other tarantulas. This one is the same genus. So pretty similar to the other three. Can we get this now, please? Oh, go eat. Yeah, I think that was it. The roach is in the fangs, if you can see it, but not really exciting. Mm -mm. Now, this is one that definitely needs a rehouse because, ooh. Roach, I need quickly, roach. Hey, here is my offering. Oh, <laughs> this was actually pretty fast and we can Mm, we see the fangs, right? We see the fangs, like a tiny, tiny fang right there. And we can actually see the coloration on the legs and everything. Ooh, we are getting the ball rolling. This one will for sure soon get a rehouse inside of these enclosures. And also a couple others in the bunch, like this Hilabrahis. The same one as the previous one. And she will need to come completely out in order to grab the roach, so that could be potentially good. You will see what I mean. Oh, the roach is escaping. Oh no, got him, got him, got him, got him. Here you go, girl. <laughs> Just a gentle grab, you see? But still a takedown, yeah. And this right here, this is the problem that you have when tarantula didn't really dig and it's just using the cup like this then this cup is definitely definitely too small for a tarantula of this size and therefore the tarantula will get a rehouse and this is actually a really special tarantula because this is uh, Annie's baby. This is a Tiltocatel albopilosus baby from my very first successful exec. So definitely a special tarantula that should require a bit better enclosure but yeah, it will get there. This tarantula is currently not that pretty. You see, it just looks like a, a generic tarantula sling, but this is Celhapolopus species Columbia. A super pretty tarantula once it gets a bit bigger than this, yeah. But for it to get bigger, we need to feed it. Oh, you didn't see that. But in order, third time's the charm. But in order for them to grow, we need to feed the... Please, tarantulas, what are you doing? Why are you trying to make my life so hard? Go there and grab that roach. Huh? What do you say? Or are you also in a pre or something? She definitely don't want that roach. But I have another one, so we will try to feed that one. Look what she's doing. Come on, go back in your enclosure, you little troll. Mind your legs. Great. Let's see if the other one will surprise us. And here's the roach. Today it is definitely not my day. It is definitely not a day for a feeding video. But still you are getting a feeding video. I mean we had a couple of successful ones so this is officially a feeding video. Uh, for the last two tarantulas I have also something really special. And they are these bunch. These are Psalmopeus pulhers all of them but 
and these ones are bigger ones from first exec and these ones are second i mean smaller ones from the second exec but both execs came from just one pairing. It was a thing that I forgot when I originally paired my female. So you can imagine my surprise when I spotted uh, more babies inside of the enclosure a few months after these ones or maybe even half a year I'm, I don't I don't remember the dates exactly. Now we will be able to compare these ones with these ones and yeah you will see the size difference and hopefully a takedown. See there's the baby and there's the maybe i should take another one where i should choose the one that is really visible this one is really visible you see while down here you have from this second egg sack you see quite a difference i think at least two molds so let's feed them should we first i'm gonna first feed the smaller one this is going to be her first lateralis roach because so far i was feeding her with other roaches that is if this feeding will be successful Ooh. Oh yeah, that definitely a successful feeding. At first I thought that this is not happening, but then this little bugger surprised me. And look how cute they are. Cute and pretty. <laughs> Just so you know, I will be now, after the video, I will be watering all the enclosures. So if they appear to be too dry, that is because they are... Oh no, 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 no. Come on, this would be the perfect, the perfect shot. Ooh, yes. What an end of this video. I am satisfied. These two kind of saved this video and without them, I don't know if I could call this like a proper feeding video, but these were the proper feedings. So now you can answer the question. Is the feeding of tiny tarantulas, tiny spiders equally exciting as bigger counterparts maybe not as exciting or kind of it is kind of different in my opinion but you can still enjoy it greatly so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did thumbs it up and comment something if you want to support this channel more there's a patreon page if you're new to this channel make sure to subscribe upload every monday sometimes on friday so see you again soon bye